It's the Bulls Podcast, episode 45. Hey, Chicago Bulls fans, it's time for your Bulls Podcast. Here are your hosts, Marcus Couch and Wise Black. Welcome to the Bulls Podcast, coming to you from BullsPodcast.com. That's where we bring you the latest news, reviews, rants, rumors, and opinions on the players, coaches, and front office of the Chicago Bulls. My name is Marcus Couch, and with me is my co-host, Mr. Wise Black. Yes, sir. What's going on, Marcus? What's happening with all my bull lifers out there, man? Super, super fun-filled week so far, man. I'm, uh, I definitely enjoyed what we had in store yesterday, so uh, I'm going to save it for the show. Man. Let's get into it. All right. We're going to talk about that excellent Kobe White record-setting crazy night at the UC. Bulls player injuries begin to mount, but what will be the effect? Are we contenders yet? Has Kobe White brought us to the promised land? Uh, no. The Bulls are still a horrible team we'll talk about that as well as game predictions for the upcoming week we got all that and more right after this quick timeout bulls fans remember to follow the show on social media at bulls podcast and at bullspodcast.com All right, Wise, in celebration of the Bulls podcast, episode number 45, we're going to celebrate all of the number 45s throughout Chicago Bulls history, and one of them might surprise you. We've got wearing number 45. Scott Lloyd kicked it off in 1979, followed by a decade-long drought where Ed Neely, the enforcer, for the Chicago Bulls, wore that from 1989 to 1993. And then the GOAT, Michael Jordan, on his comeback, picked up jersey number 45, and he only wore that for a couple of games. And he's like, nah, I'm going back to 23. I'm, I'm good with 23. <laughs> and then 45 sat dormant for nearly another decade. When Paul Shirley, the the infamous Paul Shirley, picked it up in 2004. Then Luke Shenscher picked it up in 2006 and followed by Rasul Butler in 2011. I don't remember any of those guys. But then six years later, the sensation from Michigan, Denzel Valentine, grabbed that jersey number and he's been wearing it in the league on layaway ever since. (laughs) <laughs> like, according to Frank Nitty, at least. But uh, <laughs> congratulations Frankie. to all the number 45s that are out there. And congratulations to us, Wise, for making it to number 45. You, you know, you, you drop a lot of knowledge on me when you uh, mention a lot of these names that I have never heard, especially yeah. seeing that these guys have played for the Bulls. Yeah, like Scott Lloyd, Ed Neely, and these – like, I have yeah. never even – heard of these dudes even this paul shirley dude yeah i don't know any of those guys go (laughs) go listen wise you and all the listeners out there go look up on youtube ed neely and you're mostly gonna see ed neely getting in fights yeah i see he played in the 89 to 93 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and mostly he would get in fights with the pistons and Mm. you know rodman and the bad boys and all that and I got to say, Ed Neely, you know, that tough as nails attitude, that's what I think got the Bulls their first championship, you know? I mean, he was a part of that whole thing. So, for sure. I think that toughness really shined through. Man, all all I know, though, is Denzel doesn't deserve to wear the same jersey that Mike had on ever. Oh, ever, you ever. can't say that. <laughs> Three guys, four guys that were number 45 for a year, and Denzel's been rocking it for his first year, plus all the injury years, and still right now. So, come on. He's probably been the worst since those dudes. Just to given the fact that Mike has wore number 45, no, Denzel shouldn't be allowed to. I'm well, sorry, they, sh- they should have retired. They should have co-retired that number, too. Because Mike, Mike touched it. That's how, how how long did he did he wear number forty five? 
I like he didn't like, wear it for a whole season. Like three, four. No, it was like three or four games, man. Then he's oh, like, yeah, I ain't into oh, this. Damn. <laughs> yeah. And there was another number that Jordan wore. I forget what the number was, but uh, he played in one game where he didn't even have his name on the back of the jersey. It was a backup jersey because his stuff got stolen at the airport. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that got wow. on eBay. In game. Uh, uh, yeah, he wore di- – no, he didn't get stolen in game. It was like right before no. the game. I mean, he um, wore a jersey without a name in a game. Yep, yep, absolutely. <laughs> and it wasn't his wow. number either. It was like some weird number. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, somebody got something valuable. <laughs> Can't talk about it. All right, uh, before we get started on the Kobe White Madness, I do want to say hi to our newest listener of the Bulls podcast, Kristen Ledlow, who does the reporting for TNT and is an outstanding student of the game of basketball. She just started up a new podcast with Candace Parker called Ledlow and Parker, and all of you NBA fans should definitely check it out. It's actually a really fun podcast to listen to, and uh, on one of the more recent ones, uh, Candace Parker uh, was talking to Charles Barkley, and Barkley's like, uh, I-, I could take you. And <laughs> <laughs> I think this is going to happen at All-Star Weekend. I think Candace Parker is going to kick Charles Barkley's ass on the court. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I got into All just day. a brief back and forth with Kristen on Twitter, and she said she'd definitely check out the show. So hi, Kristen. Nice to have you on board. What's up, Kristen? And let's get right into it because this is like the thing that's been on my mind all day. All day, man. I, I, I watched the clips of all seven threes over and over and over, and it's so awesome to see Kobe White actually getting his name chanted in the UC. Since Derrick Rose, I don't remember any rookie ever getting his name chanted by the crowd. What an incredible night we all got to witness on Tuesday when Kobe White set an NBA rookie and Chicago Bulls record by hitting seven threes in the fourth quarter to seal the win and seal Kobe's legend in Chicago history. It was one of the most exciting individual performances we've seen in the last few years as Bull fans. I mean, you got to go back to like Jimmy Butler stuff or Derrick Rose stuff to get excited like we did for Kobe White. And it's got everything to do with the fact that Kobe's college coach Roy Williams from North Carolina was in in attendance and Kobe once again reignited his sub-zero attitude shooting a cold-hearted 7 for 11 from 3 ending the night with 27 points total and one of the highlights for me wise I don't know if you saw the clip was seeing Ryan Archidiacono pass the ball to Kobe and just like turn around raise his arms before the ball even made yeah. it to the hoop he that knew was it was epic. going in, right? Yeah. He knew it was going in. And and he basically he said, Hey, look, we we had the confidence to give it to him at that particular time. You know, we know that he can ball and he can shoot. And that's exactly what, what it was. And he said, I didn't want to end up being Nick Young on that play, so I was really hoping that he would sink it. <laughs> <laughs> and I Jim Boylan. <laughs> yeah. Jim Boylan uh, had this to say. He said, We're honored. What he was doing, we kept feeding him, we kept getting him, we kept finding him, and I thought that group did a hell of a job. Obviously, he was terrific, and we helped him be that way, which is what I think good teams do. That was so weird to say that, and we helped him be that way. Okay? <laughs> what who's else do we? you expect? Who's we? That's what I want to know. Did they follow up with that? <laughs> who's we, Boylan? As if he planned that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. After the game, Wendell Carter Jr. was once again vocal about being a leader within the team. He's trying to be the alpha, and I don't really see anybody standing in his way right now. He said, we see exactly what we're capable of doing, so now that's my expectation. Nothing lower than that. Now, that's my expectation. Now, see, that's, isn't that something a coach should be saying? Hmm. Not, hey, we, we made him that way right? (laughs) I've found my voice on this team where I can talk to each individual player in a manner where they will understand. That sounds very coach-like to me. Doesn't it? (laughs) Uh, He also says he would like to find something to juice the Bulls up every game if he can. 
Uh, that was part of his motivation in vowing that Bobby Portis wouldn't go off on the Bulls again, and he stuck to that. Bobby didn't really play that great. So, uh, first off, what's your thoughts about uh, Kobe and, and his performance? Uh, like, so on my last video on my channel, like, I kind of was, like, you know, getting on Kobe a little bit or whatnot. So him coming out and having a game like that just kind of, like, made me look like a douche or whatever. <laughs> so what? So what? Like, because, look, I, I, I kind of saw it a little bit differently. While it was a super dope game, but I just want to give a quick rundown of, you know, what I saw in yesterday's game overall because while it was a really good game for a few guys and – um, a game that they should have won. I thought that the biggest difference between yesterday's game in comparison to games they played prior was obviously the heroism of Kobe White, which in my eyes, you know, is a double-edged sword. But as a matter of fact, I- I'll get to it in-, in a second as to why. So looking at the game yesterday, I saw some really cool connections between Zach and Wendell early in the first quarter. Zach and Wendell hooked up for a couple lobs that were really easy points for the team. And uh, seeing the one-two punch of those guys really, that really like piqued my interest because they obviously need to collab far more on the offensive end. I know everyone's saying that Zach and Lloyd are the one-two punch of the team, but Wendell is quickly taking the leap over Laurie for one of those spots this season. Although, you know, it's, it's recently just come out that Laurie has been dealing with an oblique injury for the past two weeks and all that. And that could very well be the reason, you know, for his limited production so far by We'll, we'll touch on that later, too. But seeing Zach and Wendell was a positive early on in the game. And um, I also loved how aggressive and focused the bench unit was coming in during the first, you know, being led by Chris Dunn, who, you know, has continued his own slot on the defensive end, playing the passing lanes and picking pockets, which, you know, uh, led to transition buckets. I thought yeah, the Bulls can, had – Can we talk about him? Can we talk about Dunn for a sec? Of course, of course. Okay, so Dunn is now leading the league in steals. Yes. Isn't that amazing? So, and he, I loved this – and we got to come up with the name, so you got to help me with this one. So Dunn, as he was talking, he's like, yep, that second unit, Archie's a dog, Thad's a dog. Kobe's a dog and he, and he kept saying it and I'm like we gotta come up with a name like the dog pound or the bulldogs or you know something <laughs> we gotta come up with a scrappy name for the dogs you know what I don't, don't want to hear who let the dogs out that's not going on no, I, no. no we need something listen, else listen before we can get them a cool game they gotta put a string of wins together All right. they, got, they, they, they gotta start killing it more if you ask me but right. Dunn is he has definitely been a dog. I'm with you. Yeah, all right. I just thought the Bulls had a decent grasp on the game for the most part in the first half. Um, outside of that Bobby Portis three at the end of the second quarter. You know, that one definitely got me sweating a little bit because this year so yeah. far the Bulls have been a horrible team in the second half, which uh, leads me into the third quarter where they began to play very sloppy defense, allowing R.J. Barrett to get off. Uh, he was knocking down – you know, he knocked down a couple open buckets. I'm not sure if, you know, his wide open threes were during the second half when, the, you know, the guy guarding him would go under the screen and RJ just bury both of them. You know, but not only that, you know, he was getting to the basket and drawing fouls. You had Marcus Morris coming alive, knocking down open corner threes. And it began to look look like look like how most of the games this season have so far, where the Bulls would look solid early on, but just fizzle out towards the closing of the game. But obviously, luckily, Kobe White entered the game in the fourth and completely just lost consciousness from deep. He completely saved the Bulls yesterday because while, yes, Zach was having a solid game scoring and Wendell was, you know, he was having this, uh, he was continuing his stellar play on both ends. Now, I don't think that it would have been enough if Kobe didn't do what he did because before that, the Knicks were up. And as I said, the Bulls just suck at closing games collectively as a team right now. And yes, even against the worst teams in the league, like the Knicks, evidenced by the first game versus them. So, yeah. I mean, while it was super dope, you know, what Kobe did, it was awesome. And I think it had a lot to do with the presence of his former coach, Rory Williams, in regards to his confidence yesterday, like you said. But yeah. my only concern is 
can we rely on Kobe to do that every game? No. Obviously, that's a rhetorical <laughs> question, right? Yeah. Because we all know we can't. You know, so what Kobe did yesterday didn't have anything to do with play calling or a change in scheme where Boylan, uh, but where Boylan kind of does get credit with me is for keeping, you know, for keeping him on the floor and letting him cook. Unlike what he did in the first half with Chris Dunn, when, you know, he was out there balling and he just yanked him maybe after he missed a shot or something like that. I don't know. I, all I knew was I went to the bathroom for like 40 seconds and I came back and <laughs> I just saw Chris Dunn on the bench. And but right before <laughs> that man Chris Dunn was the best player on the floor during that stretch but anyway I digress on that so yes man Kobe White's franchise record was absolutely remarkable for the team yesterday but for us to have a successful turnaround to the season I believe it's going to take something a little more than hoping for a microwave hot Kobe White every game but I appreciated that piece of candy didn't you nah it of was course. like, man, I needed that. I needed was, that as a Bulls fan, man. I was like, oh, finally something I can just like. It you know, was absolutely smile about. beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. But all I'm saying is, is just don't get too happy. Don't get no. too happy because we got the Bucks coming <laughs> up. We got that's the title of our of our other, season. <laughs> uh, we got a bunch of other tough games that's coming up. So, yeah, I get it. We all are super happy because we saw Kobe, like, just have the night of his life, and he yeah. looked like the Tar Heel Kobe White out there. But can Kobe do that again for us? I think he got a couple more of those in him for the, throughout the duration of the season. But other than that, no, we can't expect that every night. So I just, I just want to see what Jim Boylan is going to do. That's my biggest thing. Because he didn't plan that. He isn't the one that sparked that in Kobe White. Kobe White is one of those Blue Williams type players where he can get hot any second. And you just can't turn him off. And that's all that was yesterday, if you ask me. All right, so here's the argument. Do we now start Kobe White in place of Sadoransky, who's just playing average? I wouldn't say that Sadoransky is just playing average, though. I think that he does, he does a lot of the little small things you know what I mean like with his six seven sides he does play pretty decent defense not saying that it's the best no but like he does play nice defense so having him in the lineup with a guy Zach Levine whose off ball defense is less than decent yeah I think that it actually helps our perimeter defense having Sadoransky out there and I mean you know he 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 actually does have some pretty decent decision making out there plus we need his three point shooting and like i said when we was on the ball sports uh podcast taking kobe white off of our bench would then like have us like having a bench with no scores at all because then yeah, where would right. we get our scoring from you know what i'm saying like who would give us the scoring punch off of the bench if we started kobe now but I get it. He's the point yeah. guard of the future for us. But right now, if you ask me, he looks like a two guard. So if yeah. we're trying to raise the floor for this team this season, I think his best spot is developing on the bench. Okay. But, uh, that's just me. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's a very good summary, at least, of our thoughts in terms of that. Um, let's talk about injuries real quick. Um, injuries seem to be mounting up. In fact, Zach turned an ankle in that game, and he's probable for the Bucks game on Thursday. Uh, Otto Porter Jr. is still out of action with his foot injury listed as day-to-day, though he's already ruled out of action in the Milwaukee game. And then Cristiano Felicio is unfortunately suffering the worst injury of all amongst the team with a broken right wrist. He is expected to miss four to eight weeks of action. And so that's two starters and one bench warmer out of action for the Bulls. Um, Injuries rarely (laughs) get better as the season goes on. Uh, Even though Zach played through the ankle injury seemingly fine, uh, you know that the ankle will swell up a lot if you've ever turned or sprained an ankle, and it does that Mm -hmm. overnight and the next day. And following that injury, it kind of just gets really stiff and harder to move. So. This may linger with Zach for a while. It's it's questionable whether uh, the staff is going to give enough time uh, to to let that heal. Um, maybe it's just a tape up and forget it kind of injury, but I'm um, hoping it's not going to linger throughout the year because an ankle injury really sucks and it really takes your game out of it. And then 
last week or actually uh, early this week, we got the news from Jim Boylan that Lowry has actually been playing with a nagging oblique injury and playing through it. And this explains his lack of drive and production because he's hurt. So if he's hurt, is he getting treatment for this or is he just trying to gut it out or what's Who going knows? on? Who knows? We're, we're just left in the dark, man. Like I, I think it's pretty silly how they're just now letting it out that he's been dealing with an oblique injury for about, I think they said two weeks now yeah. because it, it, it has caused most of us in Bulls nation to wonder if he's just regressing as a player or just in an early slump, which now we all can kind of understand why, why he's looked like a shell of himself lately. I find it to be, really stupid of the front office and boiling to withhold that information from the fans when they know how much press the team gets from local podcasters like ourselves and just <laughs> beat writers in general. Yeah. You know, so why, the why whole calls? state of the fan was like that. Everybody exactly. was like, what the hell's wrong with him? Dude. Like they cause all that speculation when, I mean, they could have just did it, did it that before it even began. But, yeah. um, Anyway, in regards to the the injured guys in general, like Zach with the ankle injury, which was a huge scare, super huge scare in yesterday's game, and even Otto with the I think what is it turf toe? Um, yeah, yeah, I, I I don't like it at all because obviously you know not only is it happening to our better players, but it's taken away from our depth, and we clearly need every bit of talent we can get right now because it's not like Boylan can take the next man up and get the most out of him. So, yeah. I mean, hopefully it's, it's nothing serious and the guys will just be able to ice it and play through the pain a little if possible. Because otherwise, if we thought the first 10 games was horrible, wait and see how the next 10 after those. Were. Yeah. Take Zach and Lowry <laughs> and Otto <laughs> out of it. Pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well light the tank up right now. Get it going. <laughs> All right, so uh, we are going to take a quick timeout, and when we come back, we're just going to go over the rest of it as far as the state of the Bulls. And we'll be right back after this. Hey, listeners, if you haven't subscribed to the Bulls Podcast YouTube channel, it's something you need to do right now. You can just search for Bulls Podcast or go to youtube.com slash Bulls Podcast and subscribe. We're active with our subscribers and our commenters in every single episode, and I personally respond to every single comment we get. So if you're not subbed up to us in YouTube, please help us out and give us your subscription. Yeah, guys. Also, you know, throw us a few likes on the content we've added for you there, too. Help us out, people. You can also search for us on YouTube or go straight to youtube.com slash Bulls Podcast and click subscribe. It will definitely help us out a ton. So the Kobe White extravaganza was great, but did we really need a record-setting performance? That was what we just talked about. And it's it's interesting as a state of the Bulls fan when you've got to deal with the front office telling us or not telling us crazy things, saying we've got to develop our bench and not our starters um it, you know and as we were watching that Knicks game yesterday I'm looking at the screen going are we playing against the trash of the entire league mm. or is this just some bizarre universe with like the Spider-Man pointing at each other meme where it's just some reflection <laughs> of our own Bulls teams <laughs> coming right back at us when I watch the Knicks I mean, these are two <laughs> of the biggest market teams in the country, in the league. Yeah, You'd think that they'd have pockets a mile deep to get some great talent in. All the rumors yeah. all year long of uh, KD is going to come to the Knicks, Kyrie's yeah. coming to the Knicks, and that just didn't happen. And everybody's like, oh, now AD, AD is coming to Chicago. <laughs> 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 Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. Um and it's I just I just hear these things and it just you know, I mean I mean your your videos on YouTube for me are great because I I see nothing but like a lot of the sub- subscriptions I have of different channels for NBA news on YouTube are just like trying to 
I don't know, fluff up the highlights a little bit, you know? Yeah. But I mean, you and I are kind of looking for the cracks and they're not too hard to see this year. I mean, even more evident than last year when we were dealing with Bobby Portis and Jabari Parker and the whole drama there. What do you think are these are the biggest issues? Is it is it's got to be coaching for you, right? I mean, you you flat out said we got we got to end this now. Yes. I mean, anyone who follows me knows exactly how I feel, man. And I think you hit the nail on the head in regards to the Bulls and the uh, the New York franchise basically mirroring each other. Because when you look at both teams, the biggest thing that stands out about each team in regards to nobody wanting to come to two of the biggest markets in the United States is the front offices. You have James Dolan over there in New York who, like, everyone in, in New York resents for the, the job that he's done with that team for I don't know how many years now. Like, I, I don't know how long he's ran that team. But from what I hear about the, the, from the New York fans is that they just wish that that dude was gone. Like, they, everyone hates Jim Boylan in New York. And now you even have, like, I'm looking on Sports Center and they're about to do away with Fizdale. You, you they're mean, blaming yeah, Fizdale, everything. Yeah. They, they're about to have him be the fall man for giving him that trash dump of a team. Let like, me they ask you have something. about 10 power forwards and they're blaming that two and nine start on, on Fizdale. Are you kidding me? When they have, they have Marcus Moore's running points sometimes. Let me ask you this. Like, watching the game, like, because I, I have to sometimes see the other team's feed when I'm trying to, like, you know, watch it online. And so I don't often see the Chicago feed with the commercials on it because they, they show, they're showing the NBA feed, which shows the scoreboard video and stuff, so I don't really see the commercials that are happening. Mm-hmm. Um, are there players beyond Lowry marketing with that Aiken law commercial that I've seen, are there any commercials with any other players that you see during the game or anywhere yeah, Zach, on Chicago TV? What's Zach pimping out? Uh, what, what commercial is it that Zach Levine is on, man? It, it, it's more so, um, things that have to do with the Bulls franchise. It, it, they don't have yeah. a ton of ads. Yeah. I did see the Aiken law commercial with Lowry marketing. Uh, yeah. But outside of that, everything has to do with the Bulls franchise. So it'll be like, like with the Outsiders or yeah, yeah, okay. You know, so, but nothing else. I don't see. It's any not ads like uh, what was it? Giordano's. Yeah, Giordano's no. had the one no, like, with Derrick Rose. I, yeah, Joe Kim Noah with the uh, what what bank? BMO Harris Bank. Uh, yeah, was, I haven't seen that with with any of the players so far outside of Roy Markman. Um, huh. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and we know we haven't even seen any commercials from Zenny, and they sponsor the team, but yeah, I, ha- I haven't seen that either. No, they're just not hot for us as a advertiser draw, right? Well, I, I mean, we exactly we face the pretty... same thing, man. I've gone to I've gone to advertisers and like, hey, you want to advertise on the Bulls podcast? They're like, yeah, the Bulls aren't really happening right now. <laughs> 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 thanks that, that that's crazy that that's hilarious in due yeah. time but i don't know man yeah like that, that that's where we're at right now i guess huh <laughs> i guess i mean we're we're trying to we're trying to you know crack into the rebuild here who knows but all right well let's see we uh we had some moderate success uh last week we both went one and one in the houston loss and nick's win so let's get our predictions here We got uh, Thursday the 14th. The Bulls are heading to Milwaukee. We predicted this last week. We're both going to predict L's on this one. Saturday, the Brooklyn Nets, Kyrie, and newly signed Tristan Thompson are going to be coming around. This will probably be Thompson's first game as as a uh, Brooklyn Net. So he's about to Whoa, how did I miss that? How did I miss that? Wait, what happened? Do tell. Tristan Thompson's. Sign was it with, a trade? Uh, or no, I'm what, sorry. Shumpert. I, I, I messed up. Right, Shumpert. Iman Shumpert. Shumpert. I'm about to say Tristan Shumpert. I, I did see Iman Whoops. Shumpert. <laughs> Whoops. I'm thinking I was. I got the wrong got the wrong guy. Anyway. That's that Cali Cali. Shumpert. <laughs> Shumpert. Shumpert. No, I typed this out earlier today. Uh, um, got you. All right. So I, Shumpert's going to be his Shumpert first game. Moves. Sorry okay. about that, folks. I'll edit in Shumpert anytime you ever heard uh, Tristan Thompson. 
No, I won't. <laughs> anyway, what do you think, man? What do you think? The Brooklyn Nets versus the Bulls on Saturday. So looking at how that Lakers game turned out, right, and you saw how the Bulls were basically clicking on all cylinders for the first 36 minutes of the game. I think mm-hmm. if the Bulls can piece it, because I kind of look at the Brooklyn Nets similar to the way the Boston Celtics were last year, seeing as how Kyrie Irving is the captain of the ship there right now. And, like, I was even looking at a few clips earlier today on Bleach Report just about how Kyrie Irving is getting on the guys when they miss a shot and all that. And that yeah. dude just kind of brings down team morale so much. And it, it hurts guys. Like, it, it hurts their play and all of that to where he's, like, just a man on an island. You know, and obviously he can't do it by himself. So I just say that to say if the Bulls can learn – how to end a game if they can yeah. learn how to end a game i think that we could possibly take them but that is dude. a huge if but right. i'm gonna go out on the limb and say w dude that's exactly what i had a dub on this game because i think they can do it i really do i i think that i i really think that they can do I'm, it I'm so if everybody's dub, dub. If zach's playing yeah if zach's not playing no oh yeah of course this is this yeah. definitely is bar injury all right, yes. so then Monday, we got a game on Monday then. The Bulls are actually uh, coming back and playing in the UC, so this is kind of the rubber band game. I still think they're going to lose. What do you think? Hell, yeah. Hell for you. All right, and then uh, we got uh, up to Wednesday, November 20th, uh, Derek Rose back to the UC again. The I don't, Pistons. I don't think he's going to lose to us twice. Hell. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's what I say is an L. Just we're not going to predict these games, but we got some good ones coming up. In November twenty second, Jimmy's coming back to the UC, the Miami Heat, and they're playing well. I've watched a bunch of their games, man. They're playing really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll talk about that one next show. Other ones we got coming up: Portland, Memphis, Golden State, Toronto, Atlanta, Charlotte. Man, there's a lot of games coming up here. A lot of games, and we're going to have them all right here on the Bulls podcast. We're going to take a quick break and be right back after this. Hey, everybody. Remember, we are a new show and we do need your support in social media. We made it really simple to find us with some special redirect links. You can find us at Bulls Podcast on Twitter, on YouTube, on Instagram, and go to bullspodcast.com slash Facebook to get tied into our Facebook group. And if you'd like to subscribe to the show, we are on Apple Podcasts at bullspodcast.com slash Apple, on Stitcher, bullspodcast.com slash Stitcher, and on Spotify at bullspodcast.com slash Spotify. All right, that's going to do it. Remember, you can follow Wise Black on Twitter and Instagram at Radical underscore Creator. And check him out on YouTube. Wise Black is what you can search, W-Y-S-E. E-L-A-C-K. He's always got some opinions to share, and I love watching it. You can find me online at Marcus Couch on Twitter and Instagram. That's M-A-R-C-U-S-C-O-U-C-H. Everything show-related, you can find at Bulls Podcast. Make sure you're connected and subscribe to us. And if you forget any of that or just want to see if your podcatcher is hooked up to the show, go over to BullsPodcast.com. All right, Wise, what do you think, man? Where do we go from here for the next week? <laughs> uh, I don't know. That is left to be seen. I don't even want to predict it. But uh, all I can say is I appreciate all of the listeners for continuing to uh, just mob with us on this podcast, man. I really, really appreciate it sincerely. And please continue, Chicago. Peace and love. Yeah. And thanks to all the ball on Bulls people that uh, may have heard Wise and I on that show and that are coming over here. Uh, we had a blast on that show, and I've yet to hear the edited full product as of the time of recording this show, but I know <laughs> we had a killer time, and it was so much fun. Until next time, thank you for listening, everybody. Go Bulls! Go Bulls! Hey, Bulls fans! This is your Bulls championship announcer, Ray Clay, saying so long, everybody. Go Bulls! <laughs> <laughs>